Hello friends, thank you so much for being here. Today's video is really exciting. I asked you guys on Instagram what video you wanted to see from me this week. And no surprise here, you guys chose a cruelty-free makeup guide for Ulta. So first I'm going to share a lot of brands that are cruelty free, not all of them because there's a ton of brands at Ulta, but just the main ones, probably ones that you already know, ones that I personally love. And then I'm gonna go in order of makeup application, go through each category and give you my number one top cruelty free picks. If you want to know all of the best cruelty free makeup at Ulta, then let's go. So here are some of the brands that are cruelty free at Ulta, starting with ColourPop, e.l.f., L.A. Girl, Tarte, Urban Decay, It Cosmetics, Too Faced, Ulta Beauty's collection, so their in-house brand, NYX, Milani, Essence, Fenty Beauty, Bare Minerals, About Face, which is now at Ulta, so exciting, Rem Beauty, Undone Beauty, Anastasia Beverly Hills, Ardell, CoverGirl, Smashbox, Pacifica, Stila, Makeup Revolution, KVD Beauty, Hourglass, Burt's Bees, Honest Beauty, and Live Tinted. And like I said before, these are not all of the cruelty free brands, just the most popular, the most major ones, and my favorites. Okay, starting off with face and eye primers. This one I do have on hand. And I spoke about this brand a couple of videos ago because it had come out that they had some third-party retailers and testers that did test on animals. But for reference, I follow a couple of different websites that investigate and research if a brand is actually 100% cruelty-free. And I will link their websites down below. One of them is Cruelty Free Kitty and another is Ethical Elephant. I also do go on PETA's website sometimes to look up different products and brands. But I'm talking about Wet n Wild. For a long time, Wet n Wild had claimed to be cruelty free, but they had third party testers in China. I wasn't buying from Wet n Wild and I said that I was not going to be supporting or purchasing from them anymore. But Cruelty Free Kitty recently did some research and found that they are no longer testing on animals through their third party retailers. So that is great news to hear and I am very happy to talk about the Wet n Wild and Possible Primer Base. This is my favorite affordable primer. It's silicone free, which is very interesting. It kind of does everything. I love this for the smile line areas. It's not a dupe for the Smashbox Photo Finish Original, which is another one of my recommendations. The Smashbox one is just a tried and true. It's popular for a reason. That one is the best to fill in the lines of your face and to eliminate any of like the creasing in your smile lines around your eyes, stuff like that. But this one is like only $6 and it basically does the same thing, but without having silicone in it. Now this next primer, I used to have way back in the day in college and I honestly would repurchase it if it wasn't like $37, but it is the Too Faced Hangover RX primer. That one is magical. There is something in that primer that makes dull skin, tired skin, just alive again. And the two eye primers that I would recommend, comes to no surprise, they're the only two I've ever spoken about on my channel, Milani Eyeshadow Primer. And then the higher end version is the Too Faced Shadow Insurance. That one is really great. Uh, both of these have this similar consistency. So this doesn't add pigment. It's pretty translucent. I feel like it does add some brightness to your eyelids, but it's fairly translucent. The Too Faced one is also the same, and I definitely recommend setting them with some kind of powder before going in with eyeshadow. Next, let's talk about some cruelty-free foundations. I'm using a pretty broad, overall general term. When I say foundation, I'm including like some BB creams, like tinted moisturizers, basically any base products. These are my favorite. And the one I'm actually wearing today is the IT Cosmetics CC Plus Nude Glow. This has SPF in it. And this is, the best wearing base product that I have. If you like a more light, natural, like this is probably like medium coverage type of base product with sunscreen, you would really like this. Next is the ColourPop Pretty 
fresh tinted moisturizer i used to have this but i had it in a shade that was way too light the undertones in this one are a little bit weird i don't really understand the shade system with ColourPop base products in general so if you are able to find your shade you should definitely try this out it's similar to cc plus nude glow in the fact that it's a medium coverage it's dewy has like a natural finish but it sits so well on the skin it also wears really well because it never gets dry it never bunches up gets crusty at all it just stays very smooth and fresh all day so if you can find your shade i highly recommend that one elf camo cc cream they definitely duped the original version of the it cosmetic cc cream and the shades are also a little bit strange in the e.l.f. Camo CC Cream. I don't really have like one perfect shade. I kind of have to mix in between two. I don't have that one right now, but that one is so full coverage. If you're more of a full coverage gal, this pick is definitely for you. And it has more of a satin matte texture. You can definitely set it to be very matte, but I find like this product is so good at color correcting if you have any redness dullness it doesn't blank out your skin but it covers everything that you would possibly want to cover and lastly this is a classic foundation that's been around like for 10 years and it is the wet n wild photo focus dewy version not the original but the dewy version of this foundation this wet n wild foundation wears like 10 hours it's one of the best wearing foundations i've tried and it's so affordable i actually really like the shade range it comes with a bunch of different undertones okay next is concealer and i'm gonna go ahead and get these two out of the way they're both from elf and the first one is the elf hydrating camo concealer this is one of my project pan products as you can see i'm working my way through it pretty quickly i've been wearing this like almost every day it's not the concealer i'm wearing today but it has been my go-to everyday concealer. Even if you have oily skin, I think you would really like this. The original camo concealer is definitely too dry for me with my dry skin, but I find that this is just like the perfect consistency. I don't really have to set this, which is fantastic. These are self-setting concealers. This one gives like a beautiful satin finish. It's very high coverage. You can build it up. And the other concealer from e.l.f. is the Flawless Brightening Concealer. This is a slept on, highly underrated product. I never hear anyone talk about this. And I discovered it, I believe last year, the end of 2021, when I was really into like no foundation, very minimal makeup. And this is beautiful. It's so thin that's what i love about it it's so thin blends in in like two seconds and it really is brightening i feel like it makes you look like you have more coverage under your eyes than you actually do next is the rem beauty concealer i'm not gonna hold y'all i've talked about this one to death but if you are someone that is looking for a more matte slash satin kind of finish for your concealers something that's going to be great for darkness great for redness any kind of discoloration this covers absolutely everything it's great for spot concealing it's great all over the face i wear this as a foundation now you guys know i'm extremely picky about powder i don't like most powders and i prefer a loose powder over like a pressed powder and i prefer a setting powder over a finishing powder so i don't have a lot of favorites in this category is the hd powder they've recently uh rebranded and repackaged this they used to come in a much smaller little container i will say with this one the only drawback with the hd powder is it does have flashbacks so if you're gonna be in a situation with flash photography i would not wear that powder but otherwise it is so finely milled when you open the package like powder starts to lift up because it's just so lightweight and it makes your under eyes so smooth and it doesn't feel like anything and it wears so well because it's not heavy at all because sometimes with powder especially under the eyes like with your oils and whatever you're doing throughout the day like by the end of the day it can look like bunched up and like cakey and just have like weird texture under there the hd powder has never done that to me 
I would absolutely repurchase it. And also the e.l.f. Contour Palette, the powder version, not the cream version, but the powder version, those two light shades in the e.l.f. Contour Palette, I used, I used to death in high school. I would repurchase that palette time and time and again solely for the banana powder and the translucent powder in that palette. And then I have a recommendation from NYX. I used to use this product a lot as well, and it is their high definition finishing powder in the banana color especially if you are of a deep skin tone like a tan skin tone you would really like that one it's not highly pigmented so i feel like a lot of skin tones could get away with it but it truly is hd and it's just it's very similar to the elf one actually the hd powder okay let's talk about highlight i have a lot of favorites in this category i'm so glad that about face is now available at ulta because i love the about face light lock fluids that's still my favorite like cream slash liquid highlighter of all time they're so highly pigmented you'll get one bottle and it will last you <laughs> forever it's it's phenomenal so if you like a liquid kind of formula if you like a beaming highlight if you want to signal the aliens you would love the about face one next is the ColourPop super shock highlighter specifically in the shade lunch money and flexitarian flexitarian is a classic shade it's pretty transparent of a base it just seems it appears to be like a wash almost that one is just beautiful it catches the light beautifully I love the Super Shock formula, like in general. It's just super lightweight, super creamy. You can use your fingers, you can use a brush. Like it's just very malleable and flexible. And then the rest of these are powder highlights. So a classic, so glad that Smashbox has acquired some of Becca's products now that they're out of business because you can still buy Champagne Pop from Smashbox. And that one, I mean, the Becca highlighters are iconic. They just melt into the skin. They're beautiful, creamy. They're not necessarily the most blinding. They're just a classic standard of a highlighter. This next one is the Too Faced Canary Diamond Highlighter. You won't like this if you do not like glitter, if you do not like duochrome highlighters. So the natural girlies skip out on this one. But if you're like me and you love a full glam look, if you want your highlighter to be insanely dramatic and shiny and sparkly, you would love this one. This one is really cool because when you work it into the skin, you see more of that like pale white gold kind of reflect, but then you turn your head and then you get more of like the pinky tones that you can see showing up here. This one is just so fun to amp up any kind of regular schmegler look. Next is the Essence Pure Nude Highlighters. Now, these were viral way back in the day, like 10 years ago, and they're still like one of the top rated highlighters, and they're also so freaking affordable. This one is for the natural girlies. I even remember when this first came out, or when this first became viral, people were literally using the Pure Nude highlighters as setting powder. I, I don't know how. I personally would never, but people would use it as setting powder because it would just give you the most natural satin finish. This one is definitely very natural, very buildable. It adds like a brightness to your skin and it is a highlighter. Like someone would tell that you are wearing something glowy, but it's just so natural and very, very flattering. And lastly, R.E.M. Beauty highlighter toppers. These ones, you barely have to blend in. It's just like you apply it to your face and they just melt in. They're so super shiny. You can really build them up to be like, wow, like pow, pow But if you don't, they're just like a beautiful, like little gleam, just like a hint. The colors are really cool. I love the shade range in this one because literally anyone of any skin tone can wear the highlighter toppers. And the packaging, so cute. Love that it comes with a mirror and a magnetic closure. Now, kind of surprisingly, I don't have a lot of blushes to talk about. I was looking through like the blushes that I really love and <laughs> admittedly, I get most of my blushes from Sephora slash like brands that are not sold at either of these retailers. But the first blush that I'm going to talk about 
They have been my favorite cream blushes and they are the R.E.M. Beauty Cheek and Lip Sticks. I have the shade Front Row Center, which is this one. And then I have Audition, which is a really pretty classic pink. This one is like a very terracotta, like pinky brown. This formula is beautiful. They're creamy, but I feel like they set down to more of like a powdery finish. They're extremely pigmented. You really could have this for your entire lifetime and never run out. I think the packaging is so freaking cute. They're so easy to blend, to diffuse. They are more of a matte finish, but they never look dry. Next is the Undone Beauty Lip to Cheek Palettes. I have just one shade in 340 Rosewood. This was my favorite blush last summer. I wore this every freaking day. These are so cool because you get three different levels of pigmentation slash opacity going from the lightest pigmentation to most intense pigmentation so it's very customizable this has like a slight like dewy finish and i just love these for this summer like summer is the best time to wear these i just feel like they make you look so dewy and juicy and just like a ripe apple like <laughs> They're so nice. They only have like four or five colors, but all of them are beautiful. And then the e.l.f. Primer Infused Blushes are all really beautiful. I really enjoy the formula. I'm just not like a powder person. So they're not for me just because of my preference, but those stay a really long time. Those are really good if you want a long lasting blush. And also if you want a long lasting blush, the CoverGirl True Blend Pigment Blushes. Those ones, especially if you are of a deep skin tone, you would love those blushes because they show up and they stay like they're not joking when they say pigment blush. Moving on to bronzer slash contour. So quickly for contour, Fenty Beauty Matchsticks, they have great shades for literally every single skin tone from the fairest person to the deepest skin tone ever i love it they've recently revamped and improved the formula so they're not as like dry when they first came out i had the shade amber the original amber in the stick formula and it was super dry they wear incredibly because they're like a cream to powder type of formula but they've revamped the formula so now it's a bit more creamy and like workable on the skin ulta beauty 31 cheek palette i just have one in the shade santorini sun i believe they have uh three different colors of this and i'd be curious to see how deeper skin tones feel about this product because i feel like they could definitely have like two or three deeper shades in the palettes but if you love a baked formula if you love like a multi-use product you can use this on the face on the eyes I mean, they're just beautiful. They don't look dry. They look so like natural. This is for the natural girlies. The highlight in here is also for the natural girlies. It's not really like a beaming highlight. It's definitely satin, but don't sleep on Ulta Beauty. Ulta Beauty has really good products and a lot of them are vegan as well as being cruelty free. Elf Luminous Putty Bronzer. Now, I'm not a really a big fan of the original putty bronzer anymore. I feel like it dries out too quickly and it's like dry to work with, but they came out with the luminous version and I have the shade Day Trip. So if you are of a similar skin tone to me, you would really like, this is the shade Day Trip. So it kind of has like a reddish undertone, but it's not too warm. It's just perfect blend between neutral and warm but these i feel like are way more creamy and workable than the original putty bronzers and this is gonna look great in the summertime on to brows y'all know i really don't do much to my brows like i just throw a brow gel on and call it a day so i'm not the best person to go to i'm gonna just say that right now but my favorite brow product of all time is the milani weekend brow pen I used the one I had so much and I just held on to that thing like for way too long because I was so obsessed with that product. But that brow pen, the shades are great. I think anyone could find their shade in it and they last so long. And you can get the most feathery, like the feather brow effect. If you want the feather brow effect, Milani Weekend Brow Pen. ColourPop Brow Boss Gel. 
I feel like a lot of people don't like this. I'm not quite sure why. Um, but I love this gel. I've gone through like two or three of these before. It's not as lightweight as the Kosas Airbrow if you've tried that one, but it's not heavy whatsoever and it makes your brows look bushy. Like it has so many fibers. It's way better than the e.l.f. one. I, I just would completely skip out on the e.l.f. one or the Essence one. Go with the ColourPop Brow Boss Gel if you want thicker looking brows, if you want bushy brows, if you kind of want like an all-in-one product. Now, moving on to eyeshadow. So starting with powder eyeshadows. I feel like this is a hot take at this point slash like controversial kind of opinion, but I actually really like Tarte eyeshadows. Their color stories are like very underwhelming. I feel like they do a lot of burgundy, purples, pinks. I feel like they do that with like every single palette. But Tarte eyeshadows are great. Their shimmers are super foily and reflective. You don't get a lot of fallout. Like the matte shadows are incredible. They're so easy to work with. I feel like for beginners would love Tarte eyeshadows. Anyone that is into the color stories that they offer, you're going to like the Tarte eyeshadows. And if I remember correctly, they smell really good. I remember the Tarte Pro palette, the eyeshadows smelled like chocolate. It was a nice experience. ColourPop nine pan eyeshadows. I know ColourPop has like literally a million products right now and they've come out with so many different eyeshadow quads and I don't even know what they're doing anymore. But the classic nine pen eyeshadows that they've had from the beginning, you can't really go wrong with them. Uh, except for the pastel ones. Like if you see any ones that are more pastel looking, I would skip out on those. They're just gonna look gray and ashy on you and just blend away into nothing. But any other color story, even some of the more colorful ones that they've done, work and they're easy they not too powdery that's why i'm not recommending any abh eyeshadows i really used to like abh eyeshadows but they're way too powdery ColourPop, they're just easy i don't really have to say much but elf bite size eyeshadow quads this is just one of them they come in a bunch of different colors both neutral and colorful color stories these are only three dollars elf no budge cream eyeshadows that came out last year these are seriously no budge i use this one as eyeliner the colors are great there's like natural colors for every day they have like a purple they have a blue i think they even might have a yellow like and they literally don't move but i love what i love about these is that when you're using them and applying them, they don't dry down immediately. So you still have a lot of work time to blend them out, to do eyeliner, whatever you need. But when they set, like they are not going anywhere. They're fantastic. And same goes for the No Budge Eyeshadow Sticks. ColourPop Super Shock Shadows. I keep these two on hand all the freaking time. The shade Ritz and the shade Frog. These are more like topper shades. The Super Shock formula is just bulletproof. Like everything about it is great. I would stay away from any Super Shock matte eyeshadows. I don't even think they really have the mattes anymore. Probably because the formula just honestly isn't as good. But like the regular like shimmer ones, the glitter ones, just beautiful. You really don't get like any fallout with these surprisingly. And it's like a cream to powder, like they set down, they don't move. Like they're just easy and they come in so many beautiful colors. Okay, moving on to eyeliner. Let's go over liquid eyeliners first. NYX Epic Ink Eyeliner. That one is fantastic. It's super black, sets down matte, wears amazingly well. Even if you do it in the inner corner, it's so easy, has a brush tip. I've repurchased that one at least three times. It's been such a staple. I think beginners would love it. Next is my second pick. So if you're willing to spend a little bit more money and if you really want something that is not going to budge, if you need something to wear like 12 plus hours, KVD Beauty Tattoo Liner. It is the longest eyeliner I've ever tried in my life. That one's a cult classic for a reason. It just works. It's super matte. 
and it's so easy to apply. That one also has a brush tip. Next, let's talk about some gel eyeliners. So like I said before, don't sleep on Ulta Beauty. Ulta Beauty has gel eyeliners. I currently have this one in the shade Chocolate. I use this all the time on my lower lash line. This is great if you want to layer eyeshadow on top of it. You don't need to set it with eyeshadow. It wears perfectly fine without it. But if you want a really long lasting look, this one blends super easy. It's just super creamy. I shall demonstrate. And then the LA Girl Shockwave Eyeliners. This is the black eyeliner that I'm using today in the shade Blackout. The LA Girl Shockwave Eyeliners, like, you guys, they're so, they're so creamy. And I've always had an issue with tight lining, like, Whenever I've used an eyeliner to tight line, it always transfers to my waterline. And if I want to wear like a black in my tight line and like a nude color in my waterline, I could never do that because the black would transfer down, then it would mix with the white and it would turn gray and then it would just smudge everywhere. These don't do that, but they're so creamy and smudgeable. I don't understand how they don't just smudge everywhere, but I love using this to do an eyeliner look like this. Don't sleep on these. And they have really cool colors. This Essence Extreme Lasting Eye Pencil, it's waterproof. And this is in the shade Silky Nude. This is, this has been my go-to nude eyeliner. And I really like the Rimmel one too, but unfortunately Rimmel is not available at Ulta, but this is a great dupe for the Rimmel London nude eye pencil that's also really good but this one doesn't wear as long as the Rimmel one but it still wears an amazing amount of time and I love setting this pencil with a cream shade on the inner corner to make my inner corner last a long time okay moving on to mascara now this first one is for the girlies that just want a tint to their lashes if you don't like dramatic clumpy like super dark intense lashes. If you're a type of person that just wants something that's gonna separate them, it's gonna add like a little bit of something so they're just like more pronounced, CoverGirl Clump Crusher. This one doesn't smudge or flake. It's one of the only mascaras that doesn't smudge on me on the lower lashes. So if you have a problem with that, you would really like this. And this one is just super lightweight and very natural. Like you're not gonna get a dramatic look. You're not gonna be able to build this one up, but your lashes will have a really nice tint. They'll still feel very lightweight and they're going to be slightly lengthened, but mostly it provides a tint and separates them. Next, I have two Essence Mascaras, the Lash Princess False Lash Effect. This one is a cult classic as well. I know a lot of people don't like this one because they say that it smudges and crumbles on them. I don't have that problem with this mascara, but I will say I don't really like wearing this on the lower lashes because I do feel like if it gets in contact with like moisture, it does smudge a little bit. And I also love the Essence I Love Extreme Volume Waterproof version. But that one I used to wear all the time. Also holds a curl very well and it is truly waterproof. Moving on to lip products. So starting with lip liners, now that About Face is at Ulta, you guys have to try the Matte Fix lip pencils. I will always repurchase these. These are so creamy. Like they are literally the creamiest lip pencil I've ever used. I shall demonstrate how freaking creamy how they glide on. These actually set down. A great more affordable version. This is not a dupe whatsoever, but the NYX Suede Matte Lip Pencils are also very long lasting. Like if you really need something to wear long and not move out of your lip line, not bleed at all, this one is really nice. I love the shade Mason. It's great as a contour shade. That's it right there, the color Mason. Moving on to lipstick. I only have one of these lipsticks actually. And it is, the first one is the Urban Decay Vice Hydrating Lipstick I have in the shade Oat Milk. This is one of my favorite like light center shade colors to wear. And these wear a great time, they're super comfortable. 
It's just a great bullet lipstick. They're more of a satin matte. They're not truly 100% matte and they're definitely not glossy. But if you are looking for some more affordable options, I got you. First of all, Milani's lipsticks are fantastic, specifically their nude colors. They make really good nude colors. They're matte lipsticks, let me be clear. They are truly matte lipsticks. But if you like that, you would really enjoy the Milani ones. Now let's talk about some liquid lipsticks. First, these are the best smelling liquid lipsticks that I've ever tried. Um, and I normally don't want scent in my products, but if they do have a scent, I would love for them to smell like the REM Beauty On Your Collar Liquid Lipsticks. These smell like the MAC lipsticks. If you know, you know. MAC lipsticks smell like vanilla, kind of like cupcake-y, but like on crack. And it's not overpowering. Like once you put them on your lips and they dry down, the scent doesn't linger. So if you're sensitive to fragrance, I think you would still enjoy these because the scent is not going to linger and bother you. Uh, the colors are beautiful. I love the color range that they have in all of their lip products. And they wear a decent amount of time and they, they do fade off like after like eight hours and they leave behind like a stain. So they wear pretty well in my opinion. Now this is probably the most expensive uh, liquid lipstick that I'm recommending and it is the Smashbox Always On Longwear Liquid Lipsticks. And if you're willing to spend the money and you find a color that really calls to you, I would absolutely do it. These wear incredibly well, like always on, like truly they live up to the name. I used to eat like burgers, like greasy food when I would wear these lipsticks and they don't move, <laughs> but they're super thin and have like a very light, thin, moussey consistency. Now this one is a more affordable option and it is the Wet n Wild Megalass Liquid Catsuit Liquid Lipsticks. They come in both a matte formula and a shine formula and both of them are fantastic. Now, the matte formula is very similar to the Smashbox one. It's very light and moussey, and they fade off kind of like the R.E.M. Beauty ones. Well, they will fade off. They're definitely not transfer proof, but they leave behind a stain, so you can't really tell that much of a difference. But if you are someone who likes like a high shine kind of lacquered look to your lips, especially if you want to wear bold color, but have it be shiny and also long wearing, you would really, really like the shine formula of the Megalass cat suits. The colors are so unique and interesting. I love the color range of the shine formula, but surprisingly, like those wear so well, like more, way more than you would think from a shiny type of formula. But the only con I would say, if you are interested in the shine liquid lipsticks, is you feel the lip product on there because they are pretty thick they're super pigmented and even if you drink even if you eat you're going to have it on there they're incredible and the formula is very impressive but you can tell you can feel something on your lips and last liquid lipstick formula i'm surprised i have this many recommendations um for liquid lipsticks but there's a couple good ones and the last one are the about face Paint it matte lip colors. I would say that these are the best overall liquid lipstick formula you can get at Ulta. Like, hands down. The About Face liquid lipsticks are so thin. Like, I always forget that I'm wearing them. Like, I'll look in the mirror and I'll have, like, a super bold color on that I forgot that I put on because you never feel these. Hey, let's talk about lip gloss. Fenty Beauty Gloss Bomb Heat is the best gloss bomb formula, in my opinion. These have such a nice, like, tingly, like, kind of like cinnamon sensation. They don't hurt. The colors are really nice. They smell like some kind of gummy candy, like, these are just really nice. <laughs> Big pop blouse. Y'all know I love this. Like, look how much I've used of this. This is one of my Project Pan products. It's the Undone Beauty Big Papa Blouse. 
they have really nice like more like summery kind of shades this is the most hydrating lip gloss i've ever tried it's like a liquefied lip balm a classic nyx butter glosses these smell like cake batter the colors are fantastic like they have so many colors they have a great nude selection if you love wearing bold colors like black green purple they have that for you too they're super lightweight they kind of feel like a mix between a lip cream and a lip balm and these are by far the best plumping lip glosses at the drugstore and they are the elf lip plumping glosses i'm actually wearing the shade mauve lady today as my lip gloss and i've repurchased the shade mocha twist three times this is my third one it's they're great they last really well because they cling to your lips they're not liquidy and watery whatsoever the more of a thicker creamy texture and the plumping sensation goes away like really quickly all right we're almost to the end setting sprays these two i don't currently own and the only problem that i have about these recommendations is they're still good don't get me wrong i just don't like alcohol or like denatured alcohol in my setting spray which neither of these irritated my skin let me be clear they never irritated my skin i just don't like the idea of putting alcohol in my face you know but the nyx dewy finish setting spray i mean i i would go through bottles of that like i would find an every single allowance penny that i had to buy another bottle of the dewy finish <laughs> setting spray from nyx that one provides a beautiful glow like if you don't like to be glowy try the matte one but for the glowy girls like yes that one is so good and it really does make your makeup last as well but this next one is the best setting spray at the drugstore by far milani make it last i feel like is a is a dupe for the urban decay all-nighter spray or like the Morphe Continuous Setting Spray or like the One Size Beauty Setting Spray, like the Make It Last makes it last. Like, especially if you wear a lot of powder. If you wear a lot of powder and you're worried about your powder like disappearing or bunching up or like creating lines on your face, Make It Last is going to make it look exactly the same way as when you first apply it. Last two things I'm gonna talk about. Best brushes, cruelty-free brushes to get at Ulta. Number one, IT Cosmetics. I've had this IT Cosmetics Complexion Perfection for six years, I think. They will last you a lifetime. I also highly recommend Real Technique, Real Techniques brushes. This one I use all the time. It's their blush brush. This also is great for powder, bronzer, like the only thing about Real Techniques brushes is this. When you're trying to travel with these, they don't really fit in like, like the brush cases where you put them in the slots because the butt is wider instead of being thinner at the bottom. So that's the only thing about Real Techniques brushes, but they're also super high quality and will last you a lifetime. And very quickly, lashes. I only buy Ardell Lashes at Ulta. Ardell Lashes are truly the best. I highly recommend the Duo Lash Adhesive in the green. That's the invisible one that is infused with vitamins. That one is the only lash glue I'll ever use. And the Remy 778 Lashes and the Demi Wispies. That is all I have for you guys today. I know it was a longer video. <sighs> like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think about this video. Let me know if you want to see a skincare version of a cruelty-free guide. I am sending you guys so much love and light. And I will see you in the next one.